O come, all ye faithful. Hi, friends. Welcome to the Ransomed Heart Podcast. Day after Christmas, John and Stacy Eldridge here in the studio. Actually, not today. We are pre recording this um, so that we can have a day after Christmas, but wanted to share some thoughts with you and and carry on with you um, through the year together. So welcome, welcome back to the podcast, friends. I would have sung with you, but I have morning voice. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh my gosh, the day after Christmas. You know from much experience, where where are you normally the day after Christmas? I I have two experiences. Well, okay, let's say three. One is I am exhausted. Exhausted. Um oftentimes I have to wrestle through being disappointed. Disappointed. Not not in what I got or someone's reaction, but sometimes I just set the bar really high. Didn't live up to. Right. And then, you know, maybe not. Maybe there was incredible moments. I'm relishing them. But no matter what, I'm exhausted and uh, happy for leftovers. And a lot of times, it's my favorite day of the whole Christmas season because I'm done. I'm not worrying about wrapping or getting the great gift to the person I forgot. And so a lot of times I spend it on the couch with a book and it's lovely. Yeah. Yeah, it can be. I hope it is for you, friends. We we do have a couple things we've prayed about for you um, today and this week. And and one of them is rest. One of them is mercy. Um, Because the temptation after Christmas is, all right, that's it. Let's get going. Wrap it up. I know some people who take their tree down and pack up and there's just this push to, okay, that's it. Back to normal life. And we would we would just encourage a little mercy there. Yeah. Growing up, we would leave it up till the 7th of January, the 6th being the Feast of Epiphany. Right. Through Epiphany. We don't, I don't know. You know, we usually don't wait that long anymore, but it's so pretty. And right on the church calendar... That's not the end of Christmas. That doesn't end till January 6th. So, um, yeah, I oh, mean, somebody needs a break somewhere. Yeah, so maybe some rest today um, and this week, friends. Um, I, obviously, lots of us have to go back to work, but um, but grace, mercy, like this probably isn't the time to rush out and take back all those exchanges you need to make, all those returns, right? This, yeah, if you don't have to do it, if you can put that off for a week. I know some people have people in town, maybe the kids are home and this is your moment and you enjoy it. That's one thing. But I have found that sometimes before the Christmas season, I'm so uh, busy doing stuff and shopping that I'm very uncomfortable the day after Christmas because I'm not doing that. I, I'm yes. used to running around. Right. It, and it's actually an uncomfortable but really good choice right. to not. Yeah, yeah. Just extend yourself some mercy this week and don't try and get it all done and, and don't try and just throw yourself back into, into the pace of things. I remember um, for a number of years, our family attended a very liturgical church. And the first, the first year we were there and we hit the post-Christmas season, we came in Sunday after Christmas, and they had us all stand, you know, and start singing, and we're we're singing Christmas carols. Right? Remember that? I do, and we were so surprised that at the same time, we just loved it. Right, because they were observing um, a larger story. They were observing a Christmas season, yes. right, in the, in the church's calendar, Christmastide, right? And that carries on through the Feast of Epiphany. And, and I just love the disruptive nature of don't just blow past all this um, because because something else we wanted to, to speak to is what are you doing with your emotions now? What are you doing with your heart this week? Christmas does have a lot of expectations around it, and it can have some really fabulous breakthrough. It can have some really fabulous memories and wonder and holiness. Um, hope that was. Yeah, I hope so. Hope some of that was there for you all. Uh, but it's usually for me because of the disappointments that I just go, all right, let's just get on with things. And I don't tend to my heart 
I just blast past it. I just blast past it. So mercy this week. And then as we were praying about this, hon, you had you had something really good about looking forward to what are you what are you looking forward to? Right. Right. And and you don't have to rush there, but at the same time, it's kind of like at the end of a vacation that you've been looking forward to for a year. And then when when something is over, there's the there's the natural letdown. And like we said, it's it's not it can be it can be really tempting to just run to the next thing when our heart begins to feel a little bit of an ache. But I think the invitation rather is to invite God into the ache and express it to him, be honest to him. Mm. Um, maybe it means journaling, maybe mm. it means an extra long walk, I'm certainly doing those things that nurture your relationship with him and drawing close. And having him hold your hope because because of Jesus, because of what he has won for us, there's actually always good things ahead for us. There's always good things. We don't know what they are, but it's important for us, for our own hearts, our souls, to actually have something to look forward to. Yeah. Yeah. So probably a good idea to let yourself dream a little bit this week and and whether it's small, hey, next weekend, you know, let's take a drive. Let's let's go see the mountains. Let's let's go out to that favorite restaurant you have or something a little larger of uh, let's let's take some time off in January. Why don't we go do a little getaway or having something to look forward to is yes. is really important uh, because there's there is just that sense of it's over and and now it's just back to the grind and the demands and the duty and the work and the busyness and that sort of thing. And I don't think that's what God wants you to do with this week. I I got a pretty strong sense, friends, that he has good for us in this week. This is a wonderful in-between time. And and let it be so. Like New Year hasn't started yet, and the holidays are over, you know, the Christmas right, right, right. pressure thing. And so here's this interlude. Like, welcome it. Welcome the interlude. Welcome Christ. Welcome Christ into that. Um, John, you talk a lot about being attentive to your heart, like kind of putting the dipstick down mm-hmm. and, and seeing what it is mm-hmm. you're feeling. And um, I mean, we all talk about this, how important it is to pause and do that. And the barometer then is to check in with what you're thinking mm. because it's affecting how you're feeling. Yeah. And, you know, this morning for me personally, just so overwhelmed. And it can be that way after Christmas too because – I'll look at what needs to be done now. And it's just a bummer. You know, it's kind of fun wrapping presents. It's not as fun like packing up boxes. But yeah. But to, in, to invite Jesus in and actually pay attention, what am I feeling? And is this true? Yeah. Because after doing that and praying, I could feel it lift. And, and we're meant to have joy this week too. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. God's still here. You're still His. I remember many, many podcasts, many post-Christmas podcasts sitting in here with Craig. Uh And and one of the things he would always bring up is the shame that he would feel and that a lot of people feel after Christmas for not having done it right. Uh, I ate too much. Uh, Totally, totally blew off all of my my vows and, and resolutions to live well this Christmas. I drank too much. I I wasn't there for people. I was checked out. I just wanted to play video games. And They and, gave me a present and I didn't have anything for them. Yeah, right. Exactly. Or they gave me a present and my reaction wasn't very good. Mm, and right. So, friends, can we just name the shame for a moment? If that's true uh, for a number of you, wow, pause. Jesus, come into that. Help me break agreements with it. Pray love, pray mercy. And and we pray for interpretation. I I am needing that more and more these days. Jesus, I think that my interpretation of things is accurate. And then you come along and go, actually, John, you you didn't blow that. Like that, 
that went fine. Or right. Just letting him interpret how Christmas went, letting him interpret how you did, and inviting him into that. That's really, really good. Yeah. That's I, really, really important. Yeah. Um, I don't want to be assuming that you're doing terrible and that your Christmas is awful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've had some really fabulous Christmases. We have. Hope it was great. I hope it was wonderful. And yet, we are wanting to address there. there is the normal letdown. And you're not like, if that's what you're feeling, as I'm guessing a lot of you are, it doesn't mean something's wrong with you. And, and like John said, ask for God's interpretation. Yeah. So, may there be mercy this week. May there be rest. Even if you've got to get back to work, may there be a grace that you extend yourself. This isn't the week to get it all done. This isn't the week to get it all packed up, to return and make all the exchanges you need to do. And um, Let this be a week of interlude. Let it be an in-between time where- A pause, a selah. Yeah, where you just give your heart some grace and and ask God to help you interpret things. and, And then think about that, having something to look forward to. If you don't have that, ask ask God. What do you have for me? What what are you what are you bringing for me? What what do I have to look forward to? I've got a lot of projects coming in January. I can just feel my heart going, oh boy. But hang on, hang on, Jesus. What do you have for me? Like I I want I want to have a hopeful view of the future. Absolutely. Yeah. So bless you, friends, and merry after Christmas week. Yeah, merry Christmas.